I told you previously that the common point between quantum physics and Buddhism is that they tend to criticize the absolute properties and the absolute existence of things and replace it with relative properties and relative being. Okay, so the interesting point is that once you have accepted this very radical view, then you can remove or dispel many of the so-called quantum paradoxes. So I would say this criticism of absolute being, of own being, is a very powerful tool to make quantum physics less paradoxical. For instance, in the next slide, we are trying to understand the famous Schrodinger's cat. Um, so, I, first of all, I will explain you the f this thought experiment that was imagined by Erwin Schrödinger in 1935. So, let's imagine that you have a laboratory represented here by a box, a closed box. Okay? In this box, you have at the extreme left a little piece of radioactive material. And this little piece of radioactive material has a probability one half to have one disintegration in one hour. Okay? Then, after that, you have a Geiger counter. The Geiger counter may react if it receives a certain um, radioactive particle, namely if the radioactive material has had one disintegration during that hour, then there will be a click of the Geiger counter. Then after that, moving sl slowly, no, no, moving slowly uh, from left to right, then the Geiger counter sends a signal to a computer. The computer records the signal from uh, the Geiger counter and if the Geiger counter sends the signal that it has detected one click of radioactivity, then the computer moves a robotic arm and breaks a little bo bottle of poison. And in that case, if the bottle of poison is broken, then the poor cat who is in this box dies. Now, okay, until now there is nothing mysterious. It's sad, and fortunately it's only a thought experiment because poor cat will not die in reality. But, um, but what is so strange and mysterious in this thought experiment is that during this hour where the radioactive material has a probability one half to disintegrate and one half not to disintegrate, the state of the radioactive material is represented by a certain symbol called psi or state vector that represents a superposition between the two states of being disintegrated and not being disintegrated. And um, uh, Paul Dirac, a famous British physicist, said that the state of the radioactive atom is a property which is vaguely intermediate between those of the two original states. Here, that the state of the radioactive material is a sort of mixture between being disintegrated and being not disintegrated. Okay, so you say, oh, that's strange. This radioactive material has no definite state. It has a sort of mixture of states. It has uh, a blurred state, so to speak. And this is represented uh, mathematically by a sum of a state zero, namely no disintegration, and the state one, namely one disintegration. Okay, so the state of the radioactive material 
is a supposition. It's a mixture. It's blurred. Now, let's come to the next processes. When a certain uh, Geiger counter registers, records the, the signal from the radioactive material, then it interacts with this radioactive material. And when it interacts with the radioactive material, what occurs, according to, to the laws of quantum mechanics, is that the Geiger counter itself becomes superposed. It becomes blurred. It becomes vaguely intermediate between the two states of having recorded a click or having not recorded a click. The same for the computer. It will become blurred, mixed, and so on. The state of the computer will be blurred, mixed, and so on. And finally, the same for the bottle of poison. The state of the bottle of poison will be half broken, half not broken, and nothing definite. And what is completely amazing and unacceptable, and it's precisely for that reason that Schrodinger imagined this thought experiment, is that at the end of the process, even the cat will become blurred, mixed, and so on, because it will be represented by quantum mechanics as half dead and half alive. It sounds completely crazy, isn't it? It sounds crazy, but when you open the lab, obviously you will find uh, everything in a def definite state. You will find, for instance, that the cat is either alive or dead, but not both. So there what? is special about you opening the box. What, is, what, what happens when you open the box? So this question has sounded completely mysterious to everyone. And people have tried to see what we do to the whole process by looking at it. For instance, they said that we impose a disturbance on the whole set in the lab. That maybe our consciousness is suddenly collapsing the state of what is in the box. Or you could say that maybe there is a spontaneous collapse of the state of the box from one blurred state to a well-defined state. Or maybe you may also think that, uh, you know, in one world the cat is alive and in another world the cat is dead. So you have plenty of so-called solution to this cat paradox problem, but they are all strange and paradoxical. One doesn't see why consciousness should do something to cats and to, to uh, radioactive materials and to Geiger counters and to computers. One doesn't see why there should be many worlds and so on and so on. So clearly there is a problem here. But, you know, in fact, Schrodinger didn't raise this problem. He rather imagined this thought experiment in order to show how absurd this idea that uh, a certain writing like that represents the real state, intrinsic state, of the real radioactive material is. According to Schrodinger, this idea that a radioactive material or anything is in a superposed state, in a blurred state, in a mixed state, is an absurdity. And here I read you the original sentence of Schrodinger when he presented his cat paradox. He said, an indeterminacy originally restricted to the atomic domain becomes transformed into large-scale indeterminacy. For instance, when you have, you know, a radioactive material that is half disintegrated and half not disintegrated, then the cat becomes half alive and half dead. So, the indeterminacy of the small thing, of the radioactive atom, is transformed into the indeterminacy of the big thing, namely a cat. And Schrodinger then added, 
that prevents us from so naively accepting as valid a blurred model for representing reality. So according to Schrodinger, this was the proof that you should not accept that the quantum state written as a superposition represents the real state, the intrinsical state of something real. It's something else. The state psi, or rather the symbol psi, is something else than the real state, the intrinsic state of a real thing. Okay? Maybe now you think of what I said previously of Christopher Fuchs, because Christopher Fuchs said psi doesn't represent the real state of something, it just represents our guesses about what I will see in a laboratory if I do a measurement. So in that case, there is no longer any problem. And you can see how changing our view about the meaning of the symbols of quantum mechanics from saying that they represent the real state of absolute beings to saying that they represent just our guesses about our relations with something we explore completely removes the paradox. Now in the next slide, I do this removing the paradox a little bit more formal. Usually, you, you feel that there is a paradox when you compare these two sentences. The first sentence is the following. After Schrodinger's preparation, namely after Schrodinger's thought experiment, the system made with atom plus cat is in a state superposed, in a superposed state, namely that the atom is half disintegrated, half not disintegrated, and the cat is, is half alive and half dead. Okay? But then the sentence two says, when you open the box, then you find that the cat is either in the state alive or in the state dead. And there is a contradiction. Is the cat half dead and half alive, or is it really dead or really alive? There sounds to be a contradiction between the two assertions. But in fact, you see that the contradiction comes from the fact that you use the same word state for two things that are completely different. The first, um, first sentence has state in, 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 uh, in an acceptation that is quite special to quantum mechanics. Namely, instead of state, you should say probability. Okay? And then, in the second sense, in the second sentence also, the word state just means what we ordinarily uh, mean by state, you know, in everyday life. Namely, that we see something being in, in a state alive or in a state dead. So, there is no longer contra a contradiction here, because in the first case, uh, the word state was used for a probability. Probability one half for the cat to be found alive and one half to be found dead. Instead, in the second case, we use the word state to say what we observe of the cat, what we directly see of the cat. So, just changing the meaning of the symbols, just um, working of the meaning of the word state is enough to remove the paradox. Okay?